Here's a little bit off of YouTube of a local Atlanta band called The Extraordinary Contraptions. Actually, I fib just a little bit. That's not coming straight off of YouTube. That is going through this little device, first of all. This is designed to demonstrate the principles of double sideband amplitude modulation. So this is a LM13700 operational transconductance amplifier. It's rigged up to be two uh, multiplying devices. So. I've got a device on the right that can take a signal and multiply it by another signal. And I've got a device on the left that can also take a signal, multiply it by another signal. The way I have this rigged up, we're getting this main signal we're multiplying everything by. We'll call this a carrier. And it's coming out of the National Instruments MIDAC uh, coming out of A0, uh, the analog output zero. And what we're going to do or actually what we're doing right now is we're taking the extraordinary contraptions and we're multiplying it by sinusoids twice. And the reason we want to do that is so that we can move the extraordinary contraptions around in the frequency spectrum to send them out, uh, say, AM radio or out an antenna or something like that. So really what you've been hearing is it running through this whole set. So first, let's hear what the extraordinary contraption sounds like multiply by just a sine wave. So I'm going to take the uh, signal coming out of here, or actually what I'm doing is I'm taking the speaker that we're listening to, and I'm going to put it so that we're listening after the first multiplication by a sinusoid. Ah, uh, in theory. There we go. So here we go. So you're not hearing very much, but now let's change the frequency of the sinusoid. This is 20 kilohertz. So musicians would typically call that a tremolo effect because we're raising and lowering the volume fairly slowly, and I can speed that up. We get into amplitude modulation when we start increasing the frequency to the point that the frequency becomes a tone and if you're doing AM radio, uh, something that you can't uh, actually hear, something ab above the range of, of the frequencies humans can hear. And we're, we're going to hit that. So let's see what happens when we push this up to, as we push this up to 20 kilohertz. So that's what's typically called a ring modulation effect by musicians. So now we're actually, we've pushed this up to 20 kilohertz. So we're actually multiplying it by something that's really just barely on the edge of human hearing. And what we've done is we've essentially moved the contraptions from the standard audio spectrum to something much higher in the frequency band. So to take a look at what we're actually happen is happening there, we can look over here on our oscilloscope. And let me adjust the vertical position here a bit. So essentially what you're seeing in green is the original contraptions. And what you're seeing in blue is what you get after you multiply this, the contraptions by this very high frequency sinusoid. So it's filling in uh, things fairly dramatically. Let me change the time division. There you can see the contraptions in green 
and you can see the frequency modulated version of the contraptions in blue. Now the trick is, at this point you don't really hear the contraptions up at 20 kilohertz. What we need to do is modulate it again. So we're actually now going to bring the contraptions back down to audio frequencies. We're also going to make a ghost version of the contraptions at twice the frequency of whatever the carrier is. And if we set this up at 20 kilohertz, that ghost will be up at 40 kilohertz, so we won't be able to hear it. But I want you to listen right now. This is the contraptions at 20 kilohertz. So, can't even hear anything. It's so high up in frequency. Uh, there is a little bit of residual audio uh, because of imperfections in the equipment here, but um, really this is way up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the speaker over so that we can listen to the output. And this is actually what I started the video with. So this is multiplied by 20 kilohertz to modulate it up and multiply it by 20 kilohertz to modulate it back down. Now a dirty secret here is there is that extra copy that's up at 40 kilohertz. But it's so high frequency you can't hear it. So let's play another game where I'll multiply uh, and then multiply again. So we're modulating and demodulating. We're hearing the demodulated version. But I'm now going to start lowering the frequency we're using to the point that it starts to get into the audio range. So now we're getting a bit of a uh, carrier feed through here. So you may ask what's going on there. First of all, there is a little bit of a carrier bleed through. That's just from imperfections in the equipment. I can try to trim some of that out. I think that's as good as it's going to get given my current skills because it's five in the morning, I think. But the main thing you'll hear is that with such a low carrier frequency, we do get this cacophony. Essentially what's happening there, uh, let me turn this down before I uh, drive everyone to madness. Essentially what's happening at that point is I'm using a carrier frequency there that is in the range where there is actual musical content. So what happens at that point is when we try to multiply by the carrier frequency the signal, uh, we wind up with frequency content being shifted around, but some of that frequency content is winds up landing in places where there's actual musical frequency content and it lands on top of it. So that gets to be quite a bit of chaos. You have to move the carrier frequency up to the point past where there's musical information in order to be able to avoid confusing and smearing different bits of frequency content around. So again, listen to what happens as I increase the frequency. 